What we're going to show here today is the importance of energy dissipation. In most structures, energy dissipation comes from ductile elements that will yield during an earthquake. Now, this ductility means that the structure will often undergo damage, at least in conventional bracing or in, by forming plastic hinges, ideally in beams, not in columns. And with energy dissipation, we can avoid a lot of this damage. And it's generally what's called a low damage design or a low damage approach. And we do this by integrating technology such as uh, quick tech friction dampers, which will remove energy very efficiently. Let's explain how it works. So, as the earthquake starts to stimulate the frame, you'll start to develop forces. Now below the slip load of the damper, you won't actually get any slip, any movement. As the force gets higher, we'll start to dissipate energy. Now all the energy being input by the motor is being dissipated by the friction damper or friction force limiter. Notice that the base isn't moving, everything is pretty stable. Regardless of excitation frequency, the entire system stays stable and we dissipate the energy being input. Returning to the maximum displacement position. The overall system is stable. Now we can use the underlying frame as well to resist those input forces, but you're going to see much larger deformations. The reason being because the energy input has nowhere to go. The energy input is going to continue to accumulate and cause larger and larger deformations. There's very little dissipation. So you'll see as I approach the resonant frequency, displacements are going to get larger until eventually the entire base starts moving with these larger forces. There's no energy dissipation, so the frame continues to move until eventually all the, en the energy has disappeared. If I go beyond that resonant frequency, I don't get resonance returning to it. I can get about large deformations and large forces. Thank you.